Chapter Three: Determinants. For two by two matrices A with elements A, B, C, D, A is invertible if and only if A D minus B C is not equal to zero. And this quantity A D minus B C is called the determinant of A. Sometimes we use the notation A absolute value, a symbol like absolute value, to denote the determinant. And、uh, this dead A is red. Determinant of A. Why is it called determinant of A? Because it determines whether or not A is invertible. So just by examining whether determinant of A is equal to zero or not, we will be able to determine whether A is invertible or not. In this chapter, we are going to consider n by n matrices A, and we are going to see whether A determinant of a, a quantity that we will define later, also determine whether a is invertible or not. We will see if this is true, like the two by two case. In this chapter, we will consider only square matrices. Three point one cofactor expansion. Before we define determinant, first we introduce a notation a i j. A i j is a sub matrix of a. Suppose a is n by n, then a i j has One fewer row and one fewer column. It's n minus one by n minus one. How is it obtained by a from a? We obtained a i j by deleting the i t h row and the j t h column from a. After we delete one row and one column, we the the size will become n minus one by n minus one. For example, this is a matrix one two three four five six seven eight nine. The sub matrix a One two is obtained by deleting the first row and the second column. The remaining sub matrix four six seven nine is the sub matrix A one two. Now let us define the determinant of a matrix A n by n with n larger or equal to three. The determinant of A we use the notation that A. Is defined as determinant a one one big a one one the sub matrix a one one plus a one two minus that big a one two all the way to a one n minus one n plus one that a one n. To simplify the notation, we define the cofactor c i j c i j is defined as that. A i j with additional factor minus one raised to the power i plus j. Now this one will be c one one, this one c one two, all the way to c one n. Then we can write the debt determinant of a in a simpler manner. That a is equal to a one one c one one plus a one two c one two all the way to a one n c one n. The definition of that a given like so is called cofactor expansion along the first row, and we can also compute determinant of a by expanding along any row. Determinant of a can also be obtained using cofactor expansion along row i. I can be any integer between one and n. If we expand along the ith row. Then we have determinant equal to a i one c i one a i two c i two all the way to a i n c i n. This is actually the result in theorem three point one of our textbook. The proof of this theorem can be found in the book Linear Algebra by the same authors as our textbook. The same three authors of our textbook. As an example, let's consider this A matrix, and、uh, let's compute that A by cofactor expansion along the first row. Then we have a A one one C one one A one two C one two A one three C one three A one one is one A one two is two A one three is three, and、uh, C one one will be. The determinant of erasing the first row and the first column. So we have the sub matrix five six nine eight. The determinant of five six nine eight. Similarly, we can compute 
um, we have a one two that is two and then three and we can compute c one two c one two will be minus and uh, four six seven eight and similarly we can have a one three and c one three we can verify that the result is equal to nine or we can consider cofactor expansion along the second rule and we have this one and this one and this one. So we put down a12 here, a a21, a21, which is 4. So we put down 4 here. And c12, c12, we would have determinant of the remaining submatrix 2398. And we also have the factor minus 1, 2 plus 1 at the front. So this is, we get this minus 1 here. Similarly, we have other terms. We can verify that the result is the same, equal to 9. Let's ask a question. Suppose this A matrix has a zero row. So it has one row that's equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, it's n by n. What does this say about the determinant of A? Pause and think about this. Can we determine of A in this case? Indeed, we can, right? If we just expand, we have cofactor expansion along the this is zero row, then we get a zero. Definition. A is n by n matrix. We say A is upper triangular, or we say it's an upper triangular matrix. If the entries of A is equal to zero, whenever I is larger than J. And we say A is a lower triangular. If Lij is, is equal to zero for i smaller than j. For example, we have this B matrix here. It is like so. All the non-zero coefficients are here, and all the other coefficients, the pink coefficient, are equal to zero. So, what kind of matrix is B? Upper triangular or lower triangular? Pause and think. The lower half correspond to the case that i is larger than j, right? So this is an upper triangular matrix. And why is it upper triangular? Because the non-zero coefficient is like this. And all the other coefficients at the lower half is are equal to zero. Why do we talk about upper triangular and lower triangular matrices all in a sudden? Aren't we in the discussion of the determinants? That's right. Because these type of matrices have a very special property when it comes to determinant. Let's consider the determinant for this B matrix here. If we want to do cofactor expansion, and we can freely choose any one of the four rows, right? Which row do you think would be a good idea to start with? The first one, the second one, the third one, or the last one? The last one seems to be a good idea, right? All the, other all the other entries are equal to zero, only this four is non-zero. So if we start from this row, we will only have one non-zero term. So let's do that. If we have cofactor expansion along the last row, then we have a four here, and minus one, four plus four, and determinant, the rest, the remaining matrix will be three, four, seven, zero, a two zero zero nine. If we want to compute the determinant for such a submatrix, which row do you think would be a good idea to choose? Again, the last row, right? Because here we have a up triangular matrix again. If we do cofactor expansion along the last row, then we would have this nine here and uh, minus one three plus three. This one has gone away because it's equal to one, and the determinant of the rest. It's 3, 4, 0, 8. And now we can easily compute the determinant because we are down to size 2. So the determinant will be the product 4, 9, 8, 3. And what is the product 4, 9, 8, 3? It's exactly the product of the diagonal element. Now, a question. Is this true for a n by n matrix in general. Suppose we are given an n by n matrix B, it's upper triangular. Is it always true that the determinant of B is the product of the diagonal element? It's always true, isn't it? Because we can always do cofactor expansion along the last row and pull out the last diagonal element and eventually we will get the product of the diagonal element. 
How about the lower triangular case? It, is this true also for the lower triangular case? When B is a lower triangular m by m matrix, then determinant of B is equal to the product of the diagonal element. We can verify that it's also true for lower triangular matrices. So for lower triangular and upper triangular matrices, the determinant can be very easily computed.